So if you're like most folks and you live in an area with some amount of humidity, this video will apply to you. I live in Houston and it's hot. And I've noticed that I've got some surface rust accumulating on the work surfaces of some of my tools. Now surface rust in itself is not a huge deal. It's a natural process of iron oxidizing with the environment and it doesn't really do a whole lot of damage to your tools at first. But I would like to get ahead of it and prevent it as much as possible. So to do that, I'm going to first remove the surface rust and then try out a couple of products that will hopefully preserve that surface and prevent future rust. And at the end of the video, I'm gonna go through the process of determining whether I can actually dehumidify my garage. Think I'm wasting my time? We'll see. So first, let's get to that surface rust. My particular table saw has painted wings, so I'm using some tape to protect them while I remove the rust on the table. On this side, I'm using a 320 fine grit sanding block. and then finishing it off with some 400 grit. This worked pretty good and left a clean, uniform surface. For the middle section, I'm gonna try a little bit faster process using some fine finishing discs in my angle grinder. Sure enough, this was a lot faster, but it did leave an uneven look on the surface. This is purely cosmetic and you can't tell by rubbing your hand across it, but I went ahead and went back with 400 grit sandpaper to try and even it out. On the last section, I tried a wire cut brush in my drill. This method by far left the worst looking surface and was really slow. I wound up just finishing this side with the two part sanding method that I used on the first section. After these tests, I would recommend a two part sanding method and you could even go to a finer grit if you really wanted to. So with the rust gone, it was time to prep the surfaces with some degreaser. I chose to use a WD-40 version, but any degreaser would probably work here. Wipe it off with a clean rag and let it dry for about 10 minutes. So on my table saw surface for the protective coating, I'm going to use Glide Coat. I've heard really good things and it should make the surface slick, making cuts that much easier. Using a new clean towel, just wipe off the excess. On my drill press, I decided to use the angle grinder method because the surface had a texture that I didn't think the sanding blocks would really reach down into. Again, using the exact same process of degreasing and wiping down. For this surface, however, I'm gonna try Bow Shield T9, which was actually developed by Boeing. The product claims to last much longer than the glide coat. So now that those surfaces are cleaned and coated, I want them to last. And the best way that I could actually influence that is to lower the humidity level in my shop. But how? By using maths and science. So I'll start by saying my shop is not air conditioned or insulated, so I have to be realistic with my expectations. The best solution, obviously, would be to insulate my garage and then air condition it with a ductless mini split or a small air conditioner. I don't really want to do that yet, at least, so I'd rather find a lower cost solution that maybe you could apply as well. So based on some light research, a good target to aim for is actually 60% relative humidity. It's at that point that iron starts to react more aggressively with the moisture in the air. Now this is wildly dependent on pollutants actually. So if you live in a polluted area, you might want to shoot for actually a lower target. I'm going to stick with the 60%. Think about this. If you stored your tools inside, would they rust? Probably not. That's because the average HVAC system in the US tries to keep the relative humidity between 50 and 60% on average. This further emphasizes our 60% upper limit of the target that we want to hit. So I'm going to be using a 70 pint portable dehumidifier for this test. I'll have a link below in the description if you want to check out the make and model, as well as any other products that I'm using in this video, they'll all be linked below. 
So why did I choose 70 pints? Well, it turns out 70 pints is about the upper limit of the portable dehumidifiers that are easy to get and relatively low cost. The 70 pint rating simply means that in a 24 hour period, this dehumidifier is rated to remove 70 pints of liquid from the air. Now, if we normalize that over 24 hours, that is 2.92 liters per hour that this can, in theory, remove. So is that enough? Let's do some math. So any good test begins with listing some assumptions and some boundary conditions. The first assumption is that I'm going to assume that all the calculations are being done within a shop that's closed. So the garage door is closed and the manway door is closed. I'm under no illusion that a small little portable dehumidifier will be able to keep up with the summer humidity coming in through an open garage door. So anytime the garage door is open, game over. The second is that to simplify the analysis, I'm going to assume 90 degrees Fahrenheit at 80% relative humidity, 60% relative humidity, and 50% relative humidity. Now I'm choosing those numbers because where I live outside of Houston, it can get very hot. I don't necessarily want to size a system for the hottest, most humid days. So the 90 degree Fahrenheit and 80% relative humidity will cover 95% of the worst days. So on that 5%, if this doesn't actually do anything, I'm okay with that. And the 60% is chosen as the upper bounds of where we want to get to, and 50% represents the ideal situation. If I can get the shop down to 50% relative humidity, I'd be in good shape. So to get started, my shop is 325 square feet with about nine foot ceilings, giving me a volume of 2,925 cubic feet. So with the volume of the air in the shop known, I now have to calculate how much that air weighs as if it were dry. Now you can simply look up the density of dry air and for me, when multiplying against my volume, I get 208.29 pounds of dry air in the shop. Now for the next parts, you're gonna use a psychometric chart. Now if you've never used one of these, it's just a handy reference that relates humidity, temperature, dew point, and water content in the air with a given gas at a given pressure. So in our case, it's air at sea level. The chart that I'm using is actually linked below if you want a reference for your shop. Now using that chart, we can actually look up the pounds of water per pound of dry air at the three thresholds that we're looking at. So at 80% relative humidity, there is 0.025 pounds of water per pound of dry air. At 60% relative humidity, there is 0.0185 pounds of water per pound of dry air. And at 50% relative humidity, there is 0.015 pounds of water per pound of dry air. Now we simply multiply those numbers against the weight of our dry air of our shop. So at 80% relative humidity, there is 5.21 pounds of water in the air. At 60%, it's 3.72 pounds, and 50% is 3.12 pounds. So since our dehumidifier is rated in pints, which is a volume, not a weight, we have to do a simple conversion. It turns out the conversion factor is 0.9586 pounds per pint of water. So you just multiply that number by the numbers we just got to get the equivalent volume in pints. So at 80% relative humidity, that's five pints of water. At 60% relative humidity, that's 3.6 pints of water. And at 50% relative humidity, that's three pints of water. So if we're trying to dehumidify our shop at 90 degrees Fahrenheit and 80% relative humidity down to 50% relative humidity at the same temperature, we have to go from five pints down to three pints, meaning we have to remove two pints of liquid from the air. Now, if you remember when we talked about before, the normalized rate that our dehumidifier can remove is 2.92 pints per hour. So we're good, right? Not so fast. You see, the last variable that we have to consider is the air exchange rate in my shop. Even with all of the doors closed and buttoned up, there is still some amount of air that's coming in and out of the shop. That's through door seals, through windows, through the walls even, and through the attic. Now, unfortunately, there's not a convenient figure that I can just use as an assumption. But based on some research and the fact that my house is new, I'm going to assume one and a half to two air exchanges an hour. That seems to be in the ballpark of reality. Now, there are several factors that can throw that number right out the window. Wind, for instance, is a big one. If wind is howling past my garage door, it's sucking air out and pulling it in from other areas and the air exchange rate is likely much higher. So again, part of the assumptions is that that is not occurring and we're just having normal weather. So what does that mean for our results? I don't actually know. If my guess of two air exchanges per hour is correct, that would mean that our dehumidifier would have to remove four pints of liquid every hour. And as we just said, it can only do 2.92 pints per hour. So if that number is correct, then it's not gonna happen. But given the fact that there's round off error and assumptions in the entire analysis, it is definitely within reason. So the next step is to run a real world test. So to start this test, I'm gonna use a control 
and measure the outside humidity and temperature using this gauge behind me. I'm starting the test at 10 a.m. and I'm ending it at 4 p.m. So it'll be a six hour duration. And during that time, the temperature and humidity shouldn't change a whole lot. So as of 10 a.m., it looks like it's 68% humidity and about 83 degrees outside. Now I'm also gonna take some initial readings from inside the garage without any dehumidifier helping out. So as you can see, the humidity is actually 59%, which is lower than outside, and a temperature of 84 degrees, which is higher than outside. Now this thing isn't perfect, there's gonna be error, so we can assume the temperature is about the same, but the humidity level is less. Now I kind of expected this result. I've noticed anytime I walk in the shop from outside, it always feels cooler. So I think that has more to do with the relative humidity being a little bit lower inside the shop than outside than it is temperature. Now today isn't the perfect test day because we're not at that 80% relative humidity test threshold we are shooting for, but we should see a difference regardless of the humidity level. So I'm just gonna run the dehumidifier for six hours and we'll come back and see if it makes any damn difference. So you can see about mid 50% humidity and about 96 degrees Fahrenheit. Let's go check out the shop. You can see we're now at 31% humidity and about 92 degrees. So pretty significant. I'm gonna to attempt to measure the amount of water that the dehumidifier actually collected during the six hour test. So after measuring the water that I removed from the dehumidifier, it turned out to be about six and a half pints, which is way under the potential 17 and a half pints that the dehumidifier could have removed. But I think that has everything to do with the fact that it's not a very humid day and there just wasn't the amount of moisture to remove from the air. So how should I call this? I'm gonna call this a success because the dehumidifier was able to easily keep up with a day like today, low 90s, 60% humidity. I think it's gonna do very well at higher humidity levels. It's obviously gonna take a little bit more testing. Now two things that I definitely plan on doing is tying a switch so that anytime the garage door is open, the dehumidifier shuts off and also running a PVC line outside so that it drains continuously into the yard versus into the reservoir that I would have to keep draining. Remember that all of the items that I used in this video are linked down below. So if you're interested, go check them out. So Shop Nation, thank you as always for watching. I hope this was useful. The next project, I promise we're getting back to building something. I'm gonna do the upper cabinets on the big wall in the shop and there's plenty more projects after that. So if you're not a subscriber, hit subscribe right there. Give me a like, a comment, whatever it is. I like to give a subscriber update at the end of the videos. So as of shooting this video, we're at 2,380. That's freaking awesome. So until next time, keep pursuing shop awesomeness. See you guys.